Hey Pete here for Studio Life today and it's time for a GarageBand Quick Jam. Let's go. So before we dive in here, at the end of the video, I'll have a power tip for using the effects track here in GarageBand iOS, which you won't want to miss because it's a very cool function. So hang around to the end and learn about a really cool power tip for using FX. Okay, let's have a look at FX here in GarageBand. Not to be confused with effects, which are your plugins and your EQ. FX is this button up the top here that when we tap, it'll turn this pinky purple color. And at the bottom here, we now have these effects we can use. However, the best way to go is to actually grab this handle and slide up, which is going to open up our full FX panel here in GarageBand iOS. Now let's quickly explore what we have here. We have two XY pads on the left and on the right, and these are customizable to a number of different effects, which I'll show you in a moment. We then have our gator slider here, our down sample slider on the other side, and then we have three effects through the middle here. We have our reverse effect, our DJ scratch effect, and our tape stop effect, and a reset button above to reset our effects settings. So let's take a look at our XY pads. And as I mentioned, we have two of these and they function exactly the same. In fact, you can choose which effect you want in each one by tapping right on the name here. And you can see we have a filter, wobble, orbit, repeater, reverb, and delay effect. And if we tap on the right side, we have exactly the same one. So we can set these to whichever two effects that we want to use. And we can use those two at the same time here in our track. And you'll notice that depending which effect you're using, you'll have different X and Y values here. So for filter, we have resonance and cutoff. And for repeater, we have mix and rate. So basically, the more you move up into those zones, then the more of that particular parameter is going to be part of the effect. Okay, let's show you how to use these X, Y panels here in this track using the filter and the repeater. Okay, there you go, not the greatest performance, but uh, you get the idea here that we can use these X, Y pads to change our effect, anything from very subtle right up to very intense effects. You'll notice here on the sides, we have these buttons, which are our gyro control buttons. So if I pick up my phone and tilt around, I can now use the gyroscope built into the phone to actually change the effect. So when I play back, And move the phone around we get the effect so a little bit of fun but not the most practical way in my view to actually put your effects on your track and finally we have the effects lock buttons here which means that when we tap in a spot here on the effects it will actually leave those effects on and then when we play back So instead of going on and off as we touch and release our finger, it will actually stay on the whole time. And one final little trick with the X, Y pads here is that we can actually use a stop function by using 3D touch, which means if we push harder on devices which support 3D touch, it will actually engage our stop function. I'll show you what I mean right now. So there you go, what I'm doing there is I'm tapping my finger and holding, and then as I push down harder, the stop function down the bottom here is actually engaged. So a light touch will just let you use your filter here. As Soon as I push harder, you'll notice here that the stop function is engaged. And I mentioned the reset button before, if you have two things locked like this and you're using your effects, just a quick tap on reset will bring you right back to your standard functions here in FX. Okay, let's move into these middle effects functions now. So we have our gator effect and I'll let you have a listen to what that sounds like here. So there you go, you get a gating effect, anything from slow down the bottom here up to quite a fast gate effect, which is just that delay on and off effect. It's gating, it's stopping, and then letting the sound back in, creating that gated effect. Over on the right here, we have the down sampler. This is going to change the bit rate, which is gonna change the quality of the sound. Let's demonstrate that now. So there you go, you get that quite robotic, futuristic, 
yet retro sound using the down sampler effect. Let's move into our middle effects here. So you can see here, we mentioned these before, we have our reverse, our DJ scratch and our tape stop functions. And all of these you can tap on the left of and the right and you get a slightly different effect sound using each of these. Let's go through these one by one and you'll hear and see the difference when I use the left side versus the right side. So for the reverse, I get a slow reverse effect on the left and a faster one on the right. And once again with the DJ scratch, the same thing. Slower scratch on the left, faster on the right. And again with the stop function, slower on the left, faster on the right, so you get a little more control over the type of effects that are being applied to your track. Now it's one thing to just play effects, but what we want to be able to do is record these effects to our track so that they can actually be played back when we play our track the next time. So to do that, we use the record button at the top and then we live play our performance of our effects and they will be recorded to our effects track. Let's do that now. Okay, so yeah, that's not going to win any remix competitions anytime soon, but this is just to demonstrate that if we look down here now, all of this crazy squiggly mess is our effects track recorded. So when we play back the track now, we can see that our effects have been applied to the track. Now, unfortunately, editing the effects track is not something that we can do here. If we tap on it, you'll see that we can cut, copy, delete, loop, split, and rename, but we can't actually go in and edit any of the effects. So what you do need to do, unfortunately, is if you make a mistake, you'll need to go back and re-perform your effects and re-record those here onto the track. There's no way to actually change that apart from grabbing the handles, which will help you remove maybe something that you've done right at the end or right at the start that you don't want to have included in your FX track. And you may notice that there is this power button over to the left. If we tap that, it is gonna disable the FX. And if we tap it one more time, it turns FX back on so that we can use and view and listen to the effects that we've had applied to this track. And finally, a power tip for you power garage band users. We can use FX to control the overall volume of a track as well as EQ our entire track. To do that, with the effects track selected, we tap on our mixer icon. And now you'll notice that we've got a visual EQ here that we can turn on. If we go into visual EQ like this, we've got a volume or a gain slider to the right that we can adjust the volume of the track up and down. And we also have our parametric visual EQ here so we can actually change the EQ and the volume of our entire track. And that is it for this GarageBand Quick Jam. How cool are FX here in GarageBand? If you've got comments, questions, or suggestions, leave them down below, and I'll see you on the next video. I gotta get out of this rain. Okay, so that was probably the longest quick jam we've ever done, but I think you'll agree that FX has a whole lot of features that we needed to explore. If you'd like to watch more GarageBand quick jams, we've got some more videos down below, and don't forget to check out studiolivetoday.com for more audio goodness.